Hello, my name is Fred McNew, and you're watching QAC TV 7. And we're delighted we're back, and we're going to start a new series called Fireside Chats. And what we're going to do in these programs, we're going to start out by talking about some of the re talking to some of the recently elected officials, because we think it's real important, you know, who they are, what their backgrounds are, and more importantly, how they can help you. And it's probably going to work easier for them and for us as citizens if we know, hey, this guy likes sports or this gal likes that. So when you dial that phone number, you know there's a human being behind the uh, telephone. I'm delighted our first uh, guest for the Fireside Chat will be Commissioner Jim Moran. Jim, thank you for being with us. Not a problem, Fred. Commissioner uh, Moran is currently serving as the at-large commissioner, and he just recently got elected to a four-year term. So what we're going to do, Jim, is just so everybody relaxes, just a little history of who this guy Jim Moran is, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go way back, born where, what mom and dad did, that type of stuff. Well, my father was a, a career Marine. That was his first career, 20-year okay. year, okay. 20 year Marine. So I was born on a military base, just like my brothers and sisters, Albany, Georgia. Okay, okay. Yeah, Marine Corps base. All right. Now, how, let's go back. How many brothers and sisters? Three brothers and one sister. I'm the middle child, okay. five kids. So you were military, Brad. Now, Absolutely. A, a lot of traveling or what? Well, not, when I was born, uh, we went from Albany, Georgia, up to um, North Carolina. And then after North Carolina, he had had his 20 years in. He retired and okay. moved back to Baltimore where he grew up. Okay. Well, yeah. tell, me, tell me about mom now. So dad's a tough Marine. Absolutely. Okay. My, okay. my father was, was uh, <laughs> there were 12 in his family, oh, Lord. six girls. Mm -hmm. All came first, then mm -hmm. my father. So my father, mm -hmm. six boys. My he was father, a baby. He was the oldest boy, oldest boy. Okay. with six older sisters. Oh, Lord. So, yeah, I, I didn't envy that. So that, that <laughs> okay. he, has a, he has a little bit uh, different uh, uh, skin than most okay. of the rest of us. Did you ever it, read the book, The Great Santini? No, but I was stationed there. Okay, well, you so, know what yeah. you do? I'm going to get you a yeah. copy of that because this right. will be about you oh, and yeah. your dad. Okay, oh, yeah. so you're growing up, mm -hmm. military brats, mm -hmm. so you're traveling all mm -hmm. over the country. Mm -hmm. How about schools and friends, elementary level, that type? Well, first, you know, let me go back to my oh, mother. Because, no, you know, the reason being because a lot of people don't know this, uh, in which I think is fascinating. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you see a lot today where kids grow up in a, in a community and stay in that community or they move and they don't move too far away. Right. My mother was born in Algiers, Algeria. Okay. Her father was the consul general. He was the... American or Algerian? No, the, the French. Oh, French, French. Algeria. Okay. Uh, so he was, he, it was a French colony. Okay. And uh, she was an only child. So, you know, she grew up well off. Uh, sure. Uh, but she remembers times when the Germans had dinner. At their house. You kidding me? And she was a little this child. This is during World War II. Absolutely. Okay. All right. She remembers sitting there watching, bombing the harbor. I mean, mm. just it's some really fascinating yeah, things so. yeah, yeah. Uh, with her life. My father met her after the war. He was okay. an embassy guard, in Algiers. Okay. And met my mother and fell in love. Fell in love. Fell in love. She she left everything. Mm. She left everything to come here to the United States Good with my her. father and trounce from base to base and end up in. Uh, Actually, a suburb of Baltimore, a suburb of Washington, Bowie, Maryland. Okay, now yeah. your mom ran the family, or, or? Uh, yeah. As a matter okay. of fact, is when he got out of the Marine Corps, you know, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for my father, like everyone else does. Sure. But my father uh, didn't even have a high school diploma. He okay. quit high school to join the Marine Corps during okay. World War II. Right. Uh, he got out, and he got a job, a couple odds and ends job, but then he landed a job with. International Business Machines. IBM. 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 IBM put him back in school to finish his now degree. this is what, 50, 60? No, this is 1967. Oh, 67. So he finished, got his GED. Okay. Ended up running, he worked for IBM for 20 years. Had 20 years in Marine Corps, mm. 20 years at IBM, and then he had almost 12 years working with me. Lord. And that was that was a treat. So he had quite an interesting life. Yes, he did. But you know, he ended up running the entire payroll for IBM. You came now out of the uh, route, route seventy. Yes. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Very so much. he's one yes. of those guys. Gatorsburg. Yeah. All right. So Before was, the Beltway was built. That was the IBM guys with the white shirts and the mm -hmm. skinny tie. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, how about let's go back to brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Tell me about them a little bit. Well, we're my oldest brother Rick is six years older than me. Okay. My sisters. About a, uh, two years older than me, a year and a half older than me. Then there's me. My brother Bob is my closest. We're only 11 months apart. Mm. Yeah, military thing, I guess, you know. <laughs> and then my youngest brother Jeff is about two and a half years younger than me. Okay, so, so where are they and what are they doing now? Rick lives here in Kent Island. 
He's in Canada. He, behind the high school, with Canada you High in School. The business, yes, he he, he works. He's and retired. And we're going to talk about the business. He's a retired bit. police officer. Okay. So he he was a Prince George's County police officer for over twenty years. Okay. He's retired, and my youngest brother Jeff was a Prince George's County police officer. Two policemen in the family. Two policemen. Good in the Irish family. family right? Yeah, good, good Irish family. Uh, and then my sister uh, Kathy. Uh, is a CFO of a company called Key Impact Sales, food brokers, and okay. uh, doing a great job there. That's here? No, we? well, they're, they're stationed in Hanover, okay. but they're, they own locations all throughout the United States. All right, okay. And then my brother Bob, you know, he and I were the, the like I said, the closest. 11 months uh, He is, works for the, uh, a contractor for the Postal Service in downtown Washington. Okay. Now, right. let's talk about, uh, go back, elementary school work. A mm -hmm. couple different elementary? No, I was oh, no. very fortunate when, when my father got out of the Marine Corps and we moved to Bowie, Maryland. Bought a, he bought a four-bedroom colonial, two and a half baths, you know, one of the larger sure. models there, okay. $12,000. Mm. Yes, $12,000. And he wasn't the first owner, he was the second owner. Oh, so wow. somebody had owned it for, I think. For $8,000. Yeah, well, I think they, they bought it for twelve thousand and two hundred dollars and mm. well, they had to go okay. but uh, uh, that was Bowie and I was five years old okay. so my brother Rick and my, my sister Kathy yeah, they went to school in different locations but all of us we, we stayed there in Bowie. Oh, so Bowie there. is really home from five absolutely. on. Okay. Absolutely right. So where'd you go to elementary? Somerset Elementary School. Somerset. Favorite teacher? Favorite mm -hmm. memory? You, you know I think the, the, the favorite memory and, and this might tap on something That's close okay. to you okay. is uh, the summers. Okay. Bowie was a planned community. Levitt built Bowie. Sure. Bowie had... Bowie was the place to live. Well, it had one high school. Yeah. It had three junior highs right. and 11 or 13 elementary schools. Okay. And they were all walking. Everything. I walked to, walk to my elementary school. I walked to my junior high. I walked to my high school. Everything was... A, it's a planned community. Sure. Yeah. But I think that my, my fondest memory of Bowie is the fact that you could play 11-on-11 11 11 football and never leave your street. <laughs> That the neighborhood kids. kids were there. Oh, absolutely. And what really, you know, and I, and I thought about this the other day when we briefly, I was talking to someone about the YMCA. All those schools were open in the summertime for rec centers. Recreational activities. Recreational centers. Sure. Everything. You know, I learned to play chess in those rec centers. Mm -hmm. They had all kinds of functions, so in the summertime there was something for the kids to do. We had community pools, but there was a waiting list. There was, I think there was only three in Bowie. We there was also a waiting, so you a waiting like list like a to membership. get membership. Absolutely, yeah, a membership. Yeah. So. You know, so, I mean, it was, it was a great place to grow up. And Absolutely you're growing up great. in Bowie 50s or 60s? 1965. Or 65. Okay. Uh, and, and all the way up until I joined the Marine Corps in 1980. Okay. I was there. Yeah. So, uh, Somerset Elementary, mm -hmm. where did we go to junior high? Well, before we got to junior oh, okay. high, okay. Uh, a little thing uh, came across uh, in Prince George's County which is the only county in the United States that had mandatory busing. Right. I remember the big, big Washington Post. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big, big so big I event. ended up having, instead of walking directly across the street, cutting through my neighbor's yard, Where they to go to, I had to go six blocks in the other direction. I didn't have to get on the bus, but I had to walk six blocks in the other direction to Buckingham Elementary School. Okay. And I'll give you a little secret there. Oh, when I went there, it was, it was for my sixth grade my final year there and I was right. only there for, for six months because it was the second half of the year that this started. Okay. They in, in Buckingham, what sixth graders did, they put on a massive production, a play. Well, I'm the new kid in class, and here it is, lo and behold, it's Tom Sawyer we're doing. And guess You're Tom. I'm Tom Sawyer. <laughs> so that was my claim to Welcome fame. Welcome to all yeah. right. <laughs> Sixth grade was a good year for yes, all of us. Yes, it was. So. And so then after that, it was, it was Bel Air Junior High School. Okay, that's 7th, 8th, and ninth. 7th, 8th, and ninth. That's right. Eighth and ninth. right. That's okay, right. That was and, the old junior high system. Yep, and that was the old junior high. And that was about... Oh, I'd say had to cut through Somerset and uh, but all not even four distance. blocks. Not even four blocks. Kids don't realize. I Absolutely. did. I grew up in the same area. Same thing. Walked elementary, walked to uh, junior, and walked mm -hmm. to high school. It's right. a whole different world. Right. Okay. Yeah. Junior high, all right. Oh, yeah. no. Absolutely. Okay. Loved it. That's where I got involved. In, in My father worked at IBM. He, ran, he was at the night shift. Okay. So he wasn't, you know, unfortunately, he wasn't there a lot for us. Uh, growing up, you right. just couldn't do it between no, work and everything no, else. No. But I didn't get really involved in organized sports until junior high and then I tried out for everything you know got brutalized in some things sure. but you know it was okay and I tried now, everything YMCA stuff boys yeah. club or at the school at the school at the school, at school. Okay. we had boys club I played some boys club baseball okay. uh, but in junior high is when I started with tried my hand at wrestling tried my hand at baseball and tried my hand at soccer good you know uh, so you know it was wasn't successful in any of those. That's all right. You tried <laughs> so you left, uh, let's go to junior high right. and high school. Where did we go to high school? Bowie Senior High School. I went to Bowie and High. Bowie High 
Yeah, it's the exact same today as it was when I went okay. there. It was a great nothing, school, had a good nothing reputation. Has changed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will say this much though, as large as Bowie was, my graduating class was over 1,100 kids. Mm, 1,100 kids. Yeah. People talk about temporaries here. I want to say that we had 22 at one time. Mm. 22 temporaries. Population was just growing that big in exactly. PG County, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly. Well, Bowie, I mean, it was just growing and growing and, and uh, no new high school and it just, but it was great. It was Sports great. or were you Tom Sawyer? No, no, I was, it, you know, at, at Bowie, I, I played football. Okay. I played, I, I always worked. I was, you know, my, I guess that's one of the things my father instilled in me. I wanted a car when I turned 16. You paid for it. Absolutely. Good for your dad. I bought a 1972 GTO hardtop. Oh, you were. Oh, and yeah. I wish today I still had it. Oh, I, you I, might have I, bought it for my father. My father owned McNeil Pontiac. Well, I Bethesda. bought this from a little old lady who lived oh. four blocks away. And she only went to the racetrack on it, it, Saturday. I am telling you, you know, it was <laughs> it was phenomenal. But, you know, that's, that's how I was raised. I mean, I always had a job, and everywhere I went, you know, I, I, I did great. So I worked all through school. Okay. I, I worked as an electrician's assistant. I worked as a... A bus boy, all I worked in, in a PG gas County station, all, yeah, all, okay. all local. And uh, when I turned 16, I had, well, when I turned 16, I actually had, from cutting lawns, I had enough money cash to buy, buy that your car. Buy GTM. Yeah. Gas, yeah. tires, and oil, That's we used right. to call it. There you go. Now, what position on the football team? Right guard. Oh, right so tackle. you were a lineman. I was a lineman, right. yeah. My son Ted was a tackle, so at some point you can compare a lineman. Uh -huh. That's right. Oh, yeah. JV and varsity? And no, just varsity. Okay. I didn't, I mean, I worked. So I said, you know what? I, I'm not going to go all the way through high school without trying something. Yeah. In my senior year, I Play went football. out and I started. Okay. You know, right. so I mean, that was now, it was, was different. The, how were the Bowie teams? And I forget. Oh, uh, probably decent. Very competitive. Right very okay. competitive. Uh, I think our, our our final my my senior year, I want to say we went. Uh, I want to say seven and three. Oh, so it was yeah. a good team. Yeah, okay. it wasn't bad. Right. It wasn't bad at all. Uh, favorite teachers? Uh, can you think of one? Or two? Stanley Haley, <laughs> science teacher. Tell us about Stanley Haley. Stanley Haley was a. a I would say you take a cross between a minister and a science oh, teacher, yeah. Stanley Hale. Made the class fun. He was yes. preaching science. Absolutely. Too. Okay. He, he, you know, he, he was he was he was a, an impact on my life. Good. You know, okay. I, I really, I you know, I, and now you say that one of these days I got to look him up. You should. I, I bet he's him. probably retired yeah. somewhere. Okay. I hope so. I hope so. so. After high school, what'd we do? Marine Corps. Okay. So right. I here. milled around for. I would say eight months, okay. not knowing what I wanted to do. Not, didn't, I'm not a big fan of school. It wasn't, right. it wasn't my, my gig, so I didn't go to college. Okay. Uh, my father was a Marine. And, uh, it's a family tradition. Know, it was, I guess you could say that. We, like I said, growing up. And what like year did you graduate? Let me get my time. 1979. Okay, 79. Yeah, okay, I well, just so you know, I did the same thing <clears throat> 15 years earlier, mm -hmm. high school right into the Army. Right. So talk about the Marines. Yeah. Loved it. Family uh, tradition. You know, I, 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 it's it's a family tradition, and, and it, it's it's hard to explain to people about the Marine Corps, with the exception of other military, sure. if if you haven't been there. Yeah. I remember my father had an old record. I don't know where we. I don't know. I found the record, but it was Sounds of Paris Island. Oh, okay. And I remember one day I was using my brother's old, old LP, and I put the record player on there, and I, and all you could hear was grunting and shuffling and <laughs> screaming, and you know, my father never talked a lot about the military, yeah. but uh, the record was playing, and I'm sitting there going, what are those sounds? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, my father, I can hear him laughing, and I look out my bedroom, walk out <laughs> to my bedroom door. He's sitting down on the steps listening to the record, oh, and he's yeah. laughing. I go, what's so funny? And he goes, don't worry, you're going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it was. Don't worry, you're going to find out. The hardest thing to explain, we can't sing the lyrics when we used to run in the Army. Right. Remember the songs we used to uh -huh. sing, and it gets back to what you said. It's right. only a military that's thing, right. but we'd sing songs that... Yeah. Bring blushes to most people. Oh, yeah. So, uh, what was your, uh, what's the job in the Marine? Well, my MOS, which is, is like your career, yeah. uh, the ASVAB test, right. uh, which everybody takes when they go in the military. Sure. It's your aptitude test. It tells you if you're going to be a, a scientist, yeah. a mechanic, yeah. Yeah. Or, or an infantryman. Well, I, I'll pat myself on the back. I'm mechanically aptitude. You I'm off the high. charts. Yeah. Off the charts. Yeah. So, yeah. I pretty much asked me, you can do whatever you want to do. Well, when I left high school, I was always... Uh, uh, fascinated by the state police helicopter. Okay. And I was like, boy, that's what I want to do. So I wanted to fly the state police helicopter. All right. That was my ambition. Okay. And so keep that in mind. Aviation. When we get to, You're thinking aviation. aviation. So keep that in mind when we get to the end of where I am okay. now. Okay. I mean, it all started me wanting to fly. So when I, I they said, okay, well, you want to, I wasn't an officer, it was enlisted. So they said, do you want to work on them? I said, okay. And I said, I'll work on them. And, and they said, okay. So I went through my 
schoolings in Memphis, Tennessee, okay. Paris Island and the okay. Memphis, Tennessee for almost basic in Paris Island, basic Memphis. in Paris Island. And uh, Memphis, Tennessee uh, was my A school, and, okay. it, and I learned all about electronics there. Okay. So. And uh, at that time, I was in fixed wing, which is the aircraft. Okay. In, so uh, the aviation right. part of the Marines. Right. Okay. And uh, I finished that with flying colors. They sent me to Cherry Point, North Carolina. Sure, yeah. And nice place, helicopters. It's a big air, and an air yeah. base, right? Yeah, it's big an air, air base, base. helicopters. Uh, and they said, what do you want to work on? I said, wow, I, I saw in these magazines there's a brand new F-18 Hornet coming out. Mm -hmm. I, I think I want to work on those. Well, we don't have the Hornets yet. And I was like, oh. And the, and the guy goes, well, do you want to work on the aircraft that the Hornets will replace? And that yeah. way, when they get there, you'll be able you'll to. You'll be next in line. I'm thinking, okay, this might be happening yeah, next week. Yeah, yeah. I say, yes. I go to F4 Phantoms. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, you're going to Beaufort, South Carolina. And I said, Beaufort, South Carolina? Where is that? He goes, did you go to Paris Island? I said, yeah. You're three miles away. <laughs> so back, basically back to Paris Island. Okay. That's All what right. it was. So. so you're trained as an aviation mechanic. I am trained as an avionics electronics. Okay. The fire control system. Oh, you did the electronics Yes. Yeah, okay. so I did the electronics. So the fire control, you know, when you shoot a missile, you're using all my stuff. Now, yeah. so where did you go after the MOS training? You stayed there in South Carolina the whole time? No, it was oh. the nice thing about it. So oh. at that time I had... Now, this is 79, 80? This is uh, 19... Now I'm in, in Beaufort, South Carolina, and it's 1981. Okay, so end of, Vietnam era is over. So Correct. We're end of 81. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, it was it was the first time. Remember, Ronnie Reagan was elected yes, in 1980, yes, yes. and I was in Paris Island when he was uh, elected. Okay. And I can remember them changing the pictures, and I and I can remember them going through and saying. And people want to know that the, the commander in chief's pictures in the mess hall you know, and everywhere. the first sergeant's office. And they were very. They were very pleased that Ronnie Wade. Well, this was a Ronald Reagan crowd. The oh, yeah. Right oh, now. Yeah. 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 So they were they were very tickled with that. But so I'm, I'm in Buford. It's it's 1981, the end of 1981. And I go overseas. Buford's our home base. Right. We're there four months out of every year. OK. So I had back to back overseas control dates to the Far East. Uh, I went there twice for six months, six months, came back for a year, six months. But the other time that we're back, I did uh, Top Gun twice. Did you really? Yeah, and what's nice about Top Gun because they only take Tell me what guys. Top Gun is. I know the movie. That, okay. that, well, it is exactly yeah. like the okay. movie. So basically, each they put, they select two planes, four four pilots to go to Top Gun for a six week deal. Okay. And the, you have to take a support group, and you take the best oh, the, the best of the best go, and the best of the best go. Yeah. Now I will tell you, we, we my second tour to Japan, we flew our aircraft from Beaufort, South Carolina, all the way to Iwakuni, Japan. Mm -hmm. Buford, Del Toro, and I was a chase crew. Okay. So what that meant, there was only six of us plus the air crew on a C-130. And so we you're were there following that, the jets. That's right. So if one here. breaks down, we fix it, then yeah, it takes right, off. Right. So we got a big fuel bladder in there because if, if one breaks down and we have to fix it, that, that jet basically has to fly circles around us because we're so yeah, slow. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going into um, Guam, and I, one of the crew chiefs... The Rock. Yeah. The so rock. one of the crew, crew chiefs comes back, and he, he leans in the... You know, it's loud on them, C-130s, so I'll have your... He leans over and he says something to the, the gunning sergeant that's with me, and he shakes his head. And the next thing you know, it feels like we're hitting the brakes. One of our de-icers on that C-130 fails, mm. and the engine just stops. Mm. And the pro you look out the window, and it's not turning. So I'm like, okay. That's not good. Yeah, I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I leaned over, and I, says, you know, I, I said to him, I said, what happens if we lose another engine? And he points up to the ceiling. Well, that's what a parachute's are. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So that's what you grab the parachute. So I, I thought that was humorous. Wow. I said... Needless to say, we didn't have to use them. So you went to Japan. Where else in the Far East? Japan, uh, the Philippines, okay. and Korea. Team and Spirit twice. Tour. Yes. Mm -hmm. Osa, where, I was in Tongdu Shan, Korea. Where, Osa, where I was I, in Yechon. Oh, Yechon. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's so. where the Marines were. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was the air base. Yechon was one of their largest air bases. Okay. And yeah, as you know, that even now and even today, they're, a, they're in a state of war. Oh. So they don't play. North I Koreans mean, are an interesting group. Absolutely. They're an interesting yes. group. Yes. So you're the Marines uh, three or four years? How many years? Four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what rank did you get out at? I had three meritorious promotions. I got out as a sergeant. Oh, you did all right yeah. then. And yeah, then look at the army. I made sergeant three years. The army mm -hmm. gave the stripes away. The right. Marines, you earned the right. stripes. It was yeah. a whole different type yeah. of thing. Was, so I, I tell you, I would have stayed in for for a career, 20. but but my wife, uh, my wife to be, who I met when I was. My first year in high school, she was only 14. Oh, then we, let's go yeah. back then. Okay. Uh, Mary Beth. <laughs> That's uh, right. What was her main name? Uh, Powell. Mary Beth. So mm -hmm. you went to Bowie High together? No. She oh, went no. to, she went to the, the neighboring school. Okay. And the only reason I met her was my one of my best friends moved to Crofton, where she grew up. Okay. And uh, we happened to go. I went, went to him once, and he goes, let's go up to the community pool. And there was Mary Beth, sure. 14 years old. 
checking IDs to let people in. And I didn't have one, but needless to say, so you've been a love anyways. story with Mary Beth since you were fourteen, or she uh, was fourteen. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so. that's a great story. Yeah, she just she went, she went, she hounded me. I thought, you know, what, what can I do, Fred? <laughs> Remember, she can get equal time. That's right. <laughs> so tell me about that. Okay, mm -hmm. so you you meet your future wife mm -hmm. kind of at fourteen, right? High school sweethearts. No, not oh, really. No, no yeah. we didn't. We never dated till uh, I was in the Marine Corps. Okay. Yeah. All right. How did that go? Different high schools, okay. different different groups, and. Uh, you know. were jumping around, staying in touch with her? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, very good. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you got married when then? Why are you still yeah, in the Marines? Now you put me on the spot. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I was okay. Six years, uh, six, uh, two years after I got out. I got out in 84, so okay. two years later, 86. Okay. Well, yeah. let's go back then in 84. Mm -hmm. You're in the Marines four years. You, mm -hmm. you go to the Far East. Mm -hmm. uh, end of Marine career. What do we do? You know, I, I, so I decided, you know, they were offered me a whole bunch of of nice things to stay in, sure. even come up here to Washington, D.C., okay. at Andrews, because they had a reserve squad in F-4s, okay. and they needed my type Usually of... Usually they'll give you a stripe and oh, a bonus, they, right? Yeah, yeah. all kinds of things, yeah. Every, and your own work schedule. She wasn't going for any of that. So I, I got out, went back to Anne Arundel Community College for electrical okay. engineering. Okay. And to this day, I, I, I'm able to pull that card on my kids. I didn't complete my two years, because another turn in my life, but sure. I was doing electrical engineering, I was on the dean's list. Really? Absolutely. And, and, so and I, I play that card with my kids. I was looking, none of <laughs> Study you were, hard. That's Study right. Hard. I played that Dean's List card on them. But um, yeah, so so I got out. Uh, I went going to Anne Arundel Community College, okay. working odds and end jobs. And I get a job uh, with a, through my mother-in-law, who lives right here in Symphony Village, okay. Carolyn Dick Powell, okay. uh, that uh, somebody that worked with her owned a construction business, a concrete business. Okay. And she got me in contact with him, and I just went to work for him. Okay, so you went from electronics to this concrete business. To the concrete now, business. is this the business you now own? Yes, well, this is the business I now I am now employed in. Yes. Well, tell us about right. that. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was the, that was 1984, uh, end of 84, 85, okay. that I went to work for, for uh, this gentleman. And I think it was a year and a half later, I was doing all the work because he was a sheriff's department okay. in Anne Arundel County. Okay. And he had to do a sheriffing, so I was picking it up and putting it down. And, and it's the and concrete. Tell happen. everybody what, what's the business. And, and residential concrete. Oh, okay. We're, okay. we're doing driveways, sidewalks, okay. patios, just okay. regular broom finished concrete. Right. And uh, after two years, he said, do you want to be partners? And I said, sure. I bought a piece of equipment. We okay. became partners. I got married. And then he said, the, the spring after I got married, I, I don't want to be partners anymore. And that's when I started my own business. Oh, you just broke away. Okay. I just broke away and started my own business. And... The rest is history. Okay. You know? And now, uh, go back to you. So you, so you got your own business. You and Mary Beth are married. She's a nurse already? Or no? Yes. That later. yes so no, she's, she's a nurse. nurse. Yes. So she's working as a nurse. That's right. You're running your concrete That's business. That's right. Talk, and you're living in across Bowie. the... Oh, in Bowie. Yeah, in Bowie. Oh. Uh, we, when we first got married, we lived in Crofton okay. for, I think, less than two years. Okay. Less than two years. And we bought a house in Bowie. So you went kind of back home. Huh? Yeah. Right. Well, it was, it was back then when I bought a house. Our first house we bought, I want to say the interest rate was 13.5%. Mm. Yeah, so you know where that's coming. It like, killed coming. us. We all went yeah. through that. It yes. killed us, didn't it? So that was, you know, it was a little home. It was a uh, Pulte home over by Allen's Pond and Bowie. Sure. And uh, sure. it was th like when I grew up. It was a planned community, sidewalks on both sides of the street. Everybody on the street had a kid. Just a pleasant place Absolutely. to be. Absolutely. Speaking of kids, let's talk, uh, talk about the Moran family mm -hmm. now. Okay, so mm -hmm. tell us who, uh, how many kids, what are they doing? Three what? kids, uh, all of them born at Anne Arundel right. General. Okay. Uh, Ashley is my oldest, my daughter, my only my only girl, Ashley, and she's uh, 26. We're in an even year, so she's 26. Okay. Kevin. He like me. We have to figure out that's right. how I do it. Yeah. Kevin's 24, okay. and, and Michael, my youngest, who works with me, is 22. Okay, and the yeah. daughter's a nurse, too? Is the daughter's a nurse, okay. works up at Shock Trauma in Baltimore. Okay, and the middle son? Kevin works for a, a company called Randstad. They do okay. headhunting. Okay. And, uh, you know, both Ashley and Kevin have bought their own places. Uh, Ashley lives in Crofton. Kevin lives across the bridge in Cape St. Clair. And, and Kevin's going to be getting married. Uh, uh, I think the, I've seen pictures lately. At the beach club. Okay, there have mm -hmm. been pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, so what brought you to the Eastern Shore? You're back in a booth? Well, that, that, well that, there you go. You, most guys, and I, I guess I can only equate it to the, the contractors that I know. Mm. Work hard, play hard. Sure. And uh, I've always loved the outdoors. And uh, I, I've always loved fishing, crabbing, and hunting. So I had a... Uh, when, in, in, the, in the years of doing my business, I've met other contractors. Well, through, coming over here fishing? Yeah, well, yeah, and one of them had a brother or a cousin that lived here. Okay. And I, I got to know him real well, Ray Kiefer, God rest his soul. 
Army, yeah, Vietnam okay, vet. Okay. You know, he's five Purple Hearts. Mm. Oh yeah, he, he didn't he didn't know the meaning five. duck. <laughs> yeah, so you know, we used to give him a hard time. But uh, God rest cheese. his souls. He, you know, he, yeah. he he passed away. He passed. Uh, but uh, he would take me under his wing, and he's the one who introduced me to crabbing and fishing on the Eastern okay. Shore. So I was over here all the time. Okay. And then I had a good friend of mine that moved over here, and he. He just kept pounding. Jimmy, you gotta, gotta come move, here. You gotta yeah. move. You gotta move. And I can remember we came here when I was first out of the Marine Corps. My wife and I, one of her neighbors, moved here, okay. down off of uh, Route 8, and we drove over here for a party. And I can remember my wife saying, "Who the hell would ever want to come all the it's way over here?" It's the end of the earth. That's right, the end of the earth. earth. And now here we are. And okay. We, and and you just couldn't as happy drag as you can be. Okay. You can't drag us away. Now you first lived on the island. You told me, and I forgot. You first lived on the island. Where'd you live first? When you moved oh, no. to the uh, Shore? Oh no. When we first. Where I live now. Oh, you went to so, that. So yeah, I mean, it it is a concrete man. I I it knew what I wanted. I always okay. wanted to live on the water. Okay. So it took me almost 20 years on my hands and knees finishing concrete to save up enough money to buy a piece of property, and then I was a general contractor building my own house. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and your business now? What's the name of the business? It's In like, Creta, Maryland. And you're a hands-on owner, yes, correct? Yes, I mean, a lot yes. of people say, "Hey, Jim's right. out there doing yes. what everybody's doing." Yes. And 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 that, you know and and. It might be my downfall. I mean, people say that you know, you you know, you can't grow that way. But it, we do decorative concrete. We do we pour concrete, make like flagstone, brick, right. slate, granite, right. Right. and it's an art. Okay. And you know, it, it you have to know what you're doing, and you have to stay. Something you take pride in. Absolutely. Okay. So, and am I out there all the time? No. But if it's something that that I feel I need to be there, I'm going to be there. You're there. there. Okay. And I, you know, that that I've started James J. Moran Construction back in 1986, but in 1991. It turned into Increta Maryland okay. Incorporated because I own the distributorship rights and we sell the products, we rent the stamps, everything else for other contractors. But uh, six, six or seven years ago, I started another business called Mid Atlantic Pigments where we get raw materials in, basically coming from China okay. through our supplier in Minnesota, and we're able to blend and make any color you can think of for the concrete industry. Have you been to China yet? Uh, no. You it's might a, have the opportunities to commission because we used to have I, a relationship yeah. with China, which we is another. We still do, but it, it's, it's just gone cold. It'd be good. Yes. So we've got about a minute and a half left. Uh -huh. Let me do two things. One, uh, what got you into this uh, whole political arena? Wow. What's, I that, don't know if we, we have enough time, but I, hap I happen to be sitting at someone's house yeah. listening to an update with a bunch of other business owners of what's going on in Queen Anne's County, and I would always say, I don't. why are we doing that? I, I don't get that. And then the same thing. Thank God for QAC TV. Right. Actually, that was my first That's involvement with it. That's what you tell that story. Right. It's a nice story. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, would, I would, moving here, I, always, I was fascinated. You could watch the commissioner meetings and everything else, and I would sit there with my wife at night, and, and I just turned on, and there would be a commissioner meeting, and they'd be talking like things like Four Seasons and other sure. things, and i go, why are they doing that? I don't understand why are they doing that? So I guess that's how I got more involved in it. I, I, believe me, I, I, told, I told people all the time. I had no ambition to be a politician. No. I mean, I, I've you got enough to do. You just saw a needed hey, right. a community yeah. service, right? right? There's nothing Very wrong with so. that. That's great. Yeah. Well, I just think, again, congratulations on being reelected. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. Isn't it nice to have that part of the life? Yeah. Now Very you get to govern, all right? Yes, Which is yes. Good. Very much. Jim, let me ask you if I, we have a little fun. We, mm -hmm. all, we end all these interviews with a little bit of fun, mm -hmm. and we'll do this to all the commissioners. And by the way, folks, we're going to interview all five newly elected commissioners, and then we'll go to other offices. If you could go anywhere in the world, if I said, Jim, you can go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Tahiti. Oh, Tahiti. Right? Tahiti. Just, I, think I love the blue water and, and the tropical atmosphere. And especially since it's 22 degrees Absolutely. outside. Absolutely. Concrete guys don't like the cold. Next thing, because you're a sports guy, favorite sport, I think I know the answer. Football. Team? Ravens. Ravens fans. I'll, okay. I'll be there Monday night in Are you going to be in New Orleans? Yes. Enjoy yes. that trip. Yes. Uh, if you could have, and this is one I like, if you could have dinner with anyone in the history of the world, if I said, Jim, you can have dinner, I have these magical powers, who would it be? Jesus Christ. Okay, all right, just to mm -hmm. follow. Very good, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, favorite food? Ooh, wow. You know, you don't get to decide by having a favorite. You know, I can pretty <laughs> much know, eat anything. I but I would have to say uh, steaks, you know, my fillets. Okay, you're like mm -hmm. me. I'm a steak and potatoes right. guy. Right. Now, what does Jim Moran do when he just says, look at uh, Mary Beth, I've had enough. Mm -hmm. I need to relax. What do you do? Lower the boat off the uh, lift. The boat guy. Yes, and go down the river. I, you know, we live on the Y River, and right, go... Right. 
There's a couple spots out just off of Y Island okay. in the evenings that are just breathtaking. Okay. Let's watch the sunset. Well, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Jim, first of all, congratulations. Thanks, thank you. And that's not bad, is it? Not at okay. all. No, no. Not at uh, all. And we want to uh, thank you for being the first one to mm -hmm. come on. And we're hoping that Channel 7 continues to promote the good things I know this group of commissioners Well, like I said, do. you know, I'm, I'm a full supporter of Channel 7. And anything I can do to help Channel 7, I'm here. That would be great. This is Fred McNeil. My time's up. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time you're watching QAC TV7. This is Fireside Chat. Thank you.